Good morning, everybody, and it's lovely to have you all here and lovely to see you being able to make it. So, uh, Reverend Laura's away today and our technical person's away. So, if anything just slightly goes wrong, I will just keep plowing on because it's just me and it doesn't really matter if the technology goes down. We'll just adjust accordingly. So, please bear with me, but I'm sure it's going to be a, a good time just to be together. So, I'm going to start with the opening prayer. This is another day, O oh Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am able to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, help me to do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. In good confession. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. So often we view God as an enforcer of religious rules. We see the commands of scripture as a list of to-dos rather than a path leading to an abundant life. But those perceptions aren't the truth of scripture. Those beliefs are founded on misguided notions of God's character. God is after the, the heart. More than he wants us to do the right, he wants us to see him rightly. More than he wants us to do right, sorry, just repeating myself. Um, he wants going to church, reading the Bible, worshipping, serving the poor, and living righteously to come from a heart filled with a true revelation of his loving kindness. May your heart be holy gods this week. The scripture we're looking at today is Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The foundation for our faith is not meant to be built on our works or our understanding, but rather on God's relentless pursuit of us. We have relationship with our creator, not because he's, we sought him out, but because he's always pursuing us. Any elements of Christian spirituality at work in our lives are the result of his constant grace drawing us deeper and deeper into the abundant life Jesus died to give us. Faith built on anything else but God's pursuit in faith, built on our own strength, an unsure and consistently failing foundation. Ephesians 1, 16 to 18 says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. If we need a fresh understanding of God's pursuit, we need only to pray as Paul did. 
asking God to enlighten the eyes of our hearts. We need only to look to the pages of Scripture and see story after story of God pursuing those who rebelled against him. The entire book of Hosea describes the heart of God to pursue Israel in real life. Metaphor of Hosea pursuing Gomer, who time and time again left him to prostitute herself. There is nothing we could do to keep God from pursuing us. There is no sin too great, no distance we could run that would discourage God from loving us. From the moment you were born, God has been pursuing your heart. His greatest longing is for relationship with us. Don't let a wrong understanding of who God is cause your relationship with him to be works-based. Don't let your sin and failures get in the way of running to the open arms of your heavenly Father. God is after your heart right now. He sweetly knocking on the door of your heart that you might simply let him in. More than he wants you to do something for him today, he simply wants you to know he is with you and for you. Respond to God's pursuit today by giving him your heart. May your time of prayer be marked by a revelation of his loving kindness towards you. I want to leave you with this. In Psalm 17:8, David prays, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. May your pursuit of God be built on the truth that you are the apple of his eye. May your security be founded on the truth that he hides you in the shadow of his great wings. May your heart find peace, joy, and fulfillment today in the fact that God will never stop pursuing you. I'm going to now lead us in prayer. And when we finish, at the, the, when we finish reflection, please light a candle for anybody who is on your heart, who you feel you want to pray for. I will also give you a moment just to bring anybody's name up um, that we want to pray for. Dear Lord, bless us today and keep us surrounded by your wings to protect us from the outside world. Help us to understand where we fit in as we walk out of this church today. Help us to make a difference in our community. Help us to, to be able to talk and to say the right words when we meet people, to invite them to know you. Give us the right words when we are introducing you and talking about how much we love you and how much you are pursuing the world. We pray for poor Rich who's, and his family who have lost their mother this week. We pray for all the people who are struggling at this time with illness, for loss, for being by themselves. Help us to make a difference to these people. Help us to, to know what to say, to how to, to help them heal, to be there on the journey, to walk alongside them as you walk alongside us. Help us to be the community you wanted us to be. Help us to be one church, one family. We are all here striving to to know you, to open our hearts to you, Lord. So give us the strength to make this difference. We pray for our politicians who are struggling to, to pick a new leader. We ask that they, they pick with their heart. To look to you, Lord, for the right leader, to lead our country going forward, to help our poor to help our needy, to pick up our industry, to help our NHS, give them a heart to serve as well as lead. Open their, their ears, their eyes to what is happening 
in our communities. I'm just going to give you a moment, and if you want to bring anybody's name, please do. Pray for Reverend Laura, who is dealing with the illness of her friend. We ask that you support her and give her strength, give her the words to to deal with this this illness which is encroaching into the family. Help us to support her as she supports us. Thank you for her and for her dedication in leading this church and leading the deanery. I'm going to do a Lord's Prayer now, but unfortunately it won't be up on the screen, so I mean, please stay along if you, if you want to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I close in prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold, my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and he, this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.